the truth behind Fermat's factory method. My motto, plain honesty, simple truth, easy understanding. The joy of finding things out for yourself. My basis for this statement is that the establishment denies Fermat the accolades he deserves for his last theorem, because it is not in their collective interest yet to attribute a factory method to him that is not of his invention. In the Pelican publication, The Treasury of Mathematics, by Henrietta Middenich, in the section covering the writings of Aryabhata the Elder, page 226, we come across the formula shown for factoring the product AB into A and B. It is just a variant of the theorem, Proposition 8, in Book 2 of Euclid's Elements, which has been denigrated by the establishment into the quarter squares rule, to detract from its great utility. It is, after all, a variant of the Pythagoras equation, also a name which they would love to see vanish into obscurity. Aryabhata's formula is easily transformed into the two modern forms, wrongly attributed to Fermat. In their basic form, the equations are no better or even worse than trial division. On page 224 we come across item 17a which states that if the diameter of a circle is divided into two segments A and B by a chord at right angles to it then the square of the half chord is equal to the product AB of the two segments of the diameter. I have demonstrated that this circumstance generates the quarter squares rule. This slide demonstrates the consequences of replacing A and B with just one integer raised to two different powers. The answer is the integer raised to the sum of the two exponents. We can therefore generate any and all powers of any integer we please as the difference of two squares. The bigger the exponent, then the greater the number of permutations of the two exponents to produce the same integer raised to the same power. For me, this flies in the face of the mathematician's demand for proof to infinity for the integers for Fermat's last theorem. It was also known to Aryabhata the Elder that the partial sum of the cubes summed to make a triangular number squared. Hence, the cube of every integer from 1 to infinity can be calculated from the difference of two adjacent triangular numbers squared, equivalent to a full house in poker. By repeatedly multiplying through the expressions by the square of the integer, every odd power of that integer can be realised without limit. The preceding facts also fly in the face of Fermat's last theorem. As I have drawn to public attention before, in an otherwise excellent copy of Euclid's Elements by Hall and Stevens, both of whom I greatly admire as authors of mathematics, they make the blunder of a statement shown highlighted in red. Mathematicians today still show the same contempt. Does the diagram look familiar? <laughs>